Good morning, everybody. So I'm here with my cup of coffee and I just want to chat with you a little bit about teaching poetry in middle school. April is poetry month and I've been having a lot of fun with poetry workshop with my students. So I just wanted to share a few tips and tricks about what's been working and how you might start a poetry um, routine or even do a poetry unit in your own classroom. So here we go. I'm sharing my screen with you to just um, keep me on track and show you some visuals as we go. So my first strategy is to just start small. Um, you might want to start by just having students read a bunch of poetry. What I like to do is if you have students with you in person, you could gather a bunch of poetry books from either your middle school library or if you have poetry books in your classroom library. I like to keep um, a couple of poetry books in my classroom library and have those available. And so students can have those. Um, I also like to just gather, my cat always loves when I go live. I don't know why. Um, I like to gather um, poetry websites. So places where students can go and click on links to different poems um, and just put those up on my Google Classroom so they can have access to digital poetry as well. And I just want to, students that first day to just read, read, read a bunch of poems. And then the second day, um, when I have students in person, I like them to actually copy down the poem that they find that they like, different poems. And you can do that by just like stapling a bunch of white paper together and have students kind of collect it in like a poetry anthology type of book. Um, as they're writing down the poem, they have to notice what's capitalized, how the author, how the poet punctuates the poem, uh, where there's line breaks, things like that. And then I also like them to respond to the poem and even draw a little illustration with the poem if they like to. If you have students virtually, like I do this year, I have students um, write down or type down the title of the poem and link the URL in there and then just do a little response to it that way. But this is such a great way to start out poetry by just reading, writing poetry down, responding to it a little bit be something really simple like what stuck with you about this poem? What did you like most about this poem? How did you connect to this poem? And just start there. Instead of um, really diving in and having students analyze a poem or write their own poem, this is how I like to start. My next strategy to use when you're doing poetry with middle school students is to use specialty poems. And what I mean by specialty poems uh, bookspine poetry, blackout poetry, and sandwich poetry are three that I really like to use with students. So I'm going to go through what those three are. The first, bookspine poetry, uh, you can just use your classroom library and students can line up books in a way where the bookspines create a poem. Um, so that's, that's one of my favorite ones. And what I like to do to take a next step with this is you actually can have students write down their poem or type it out and then write what they what it means to them, how they interpret the meaning of that book spine poem. So that's super fun. Here's a couple other examples of some book spine poetry that I did with my personal book collection at my house. The sandwich poem. So this is where you could take a famous poem. Um, for this example, I grabbed Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken, and you give students the first line of the poem and the last line of the poem, and then they fill in the middle of what the poem would look like in the middle of that. Blackout poetry. Um, so what I like to do with this, if you have in-person students, is just grab a bunch of books from your classroom library, throw them on the copy machine, and just copy off a bunch of random pages that students can draw from. And then if you have markers or Sharpies, uh, students can go through and they just black out the words that they don't want and they draw boxes around the words that they want to keep. And then they create a little poem out of that, out of the words that are left. So they take the, the words in the order that they um, appear and they make them into lines and sequence them. So that's the blackout poetry. And then my third and final strategy is to have um, where students actually maybe go back to the poems that they collected and responded to and they go back and study to know what is it that the poets did in this poem that maybe I want to try out in my own poem. So they go through and say, you know, I found this poem and it tells a story. Or I found this poem and it uses the first person point of view. 
and they collect all these different techniques that poets use that they might want to try out when they create their own poems. Um, so it gives them a place to start like, oh yeah, this famous poet began the poem by asking a question. Maybe when I start writing my poem, I want to try out that same technique. And they can refer back to the poem to see what that looks like to get ideas. Also, I just want to show you that in my most recent blog post, I always have trouble finding poetry that middle schoolers really like and connect to. So in the blog post that I just did, uh, if you go to my website, theliteracyeffect.com, and click on the most recent post, Three Strategies for Teaching Poetry in Middle School, I did link um, about 15 poems that I really like to use and that students have given the, their stamp of approval on that they like and connected to this week. So I have those linked in there. So definitely go check it out. I highly recommend either having poetry be part of, you know, if you have like once a quarter, you spend two days doing poetry and you just use that throughout the year, or you take, you know, two to three weeks and do a poetry unit with your students. Either way, I think it's really beneficial to have a poetry routine and take time to try it. I always love to see the students that rise to the occasion of poetry workshop. They always surprise me, the students that love it and really thrive and shine during it. Um, it's not always the students that you would think. So um, I hope that everybody's having a great Sunday morning, getting their coffee in and, um, and just has a great day and try out poetry with your students. If you do, let me know what you think and I will see you next time. Thanks everyone.